This is a meeting of the Gardner City Council and Planning Board for the purpose of a joint public hearing regarding amending Chapter 675, the Zoning Code of the City of Gardner. Take this opportunity to read the Gardner City Council and Planning Board joint public hearing procedures. These procedures were adopted by the City Council on April 9th, 2018. The presiding officer will call the public hearing to order and read aloud the public hearing notice. The presiding officer will call upon the planning board or other petitioner to summarize the proposal. The presiding officer will then ask for anyone wishing to testify to please raise their hand, be recognized, then state their name and, and address for the record. Comments from any one speaker are limited to three minutes. Testimony must be on the merits of the pending question. Otherwise, the testimony will be ruled out of order. The petitioner shall be granted the opportunity to reply to questions and comments if desired. Modifications to the proposed amendment must be submitted in writing. Attendees desiring a second opportunity to present new testimony will be given an opportunity if, in the opinion of the presiding officer, time allows. Repetitive testimony will not be permitted. The petitioners and persons offering testimony may submit written comments to the presiding officer. Upon completion of testimony, the presiding officer shall close or continue the public hearing to a time slash place certain by voice vote. Joint public hearing notice reads as follows. City of Gardner, notice of joint public hearing continued pursuant to general law chapter 40A subsection 5. Notice is hereby given that the City Council and Planning Board will conduct a joint public hearing on Monday, April 3rd, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in the City Council Chamber, room 219, City Hall, 95 Pleasant Street, Gardner, to consider amending chapter 65, the zoning code of the City of Gardner. The proposed am amendment involves changing items Item 10891, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, Chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning, to change the classification of certain passes of land along Route 140. Item 10892, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, Chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning, to add sports betting to the zoning table of uses. Item 10893, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, Chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning, to amend Section 1070 thereof, entitled Marijuana Establishments, to increase the quota allowed by the code of the City of Gardner. Information regarding this amendment is available for viewing in the City Clerk's Office, the Department of Community Development and Planning, DCDP, or, or on the City's webpage, gardner-ma.gov. All persons interested in this matter and desire to offer testimony are invited to attend the hearing. T.T. Serafian, City Clerk. The clerk will please do a roll call. Councilor Boone? Present. Councilor Craig Cormier? Councilor Ronna Cormier? Present. Councilor John Lowitz? Present. Councilor Harder? Present. Councilor Heath? Present. Councilor Math? Councilor Tisone? Present. Councilor Tyros? Present. Councilor Walsh? Present. President Kaczynskis? Present. Mr. Patez? Mr. Paul Cormier? Present. Mr. Stephen Cormier? Here. Present. Mr. Schaffron? Present. And Mr. Schwartz? Present. Quorums are present. Quorums are present. Thank you. Since we have three items, we will be conducting three separate hearings for each item and I'll read the item for the hearing before the hearing begins. We will begin with item 10891, an ordinance, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning, to change the classification of certain parcels of land along Route 140. At this time, I would like to request a report from the Planning Board, Director Beargard. Sure, thank you, Madam President. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, the planning board met on March 22nd, 2023 to discuss this amendment and continued the discussion to their March 29th, 2023 meeting in order to gather additional information and clarity on the city's watershed, surface water protection overlay district, and open space and recreation lands. After the further discussion at its meeting on March 29, 2023. The planning board voted unanimously four to zero 
to recommend not approving the proposed amendment. The board noted the importance of maintaining the historic and current recreational uses of the city's open space identified in the open space and recreation plan, especially those in close proximity to our watershed land as their reasons for not supporting this proposed amendment. Thank you, Director Beargard. Mayor Nicholson is here and will give a presentation of the proposed zoning amendment at this time. Mayor Nicholson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'm here with the city engineer, Rob Oliver, and our police chief, Eric McAveen, as well, uh, for this item. Uh, this is an item that came up through discussions in talking of our long-term economic development plans as well as some public safety concerns that came up in the area. Uh, first of note, uh, in the packet that was given to you all today, uh, based off of feedback we've received since its initial um, presentation to the City Council, there were some parcels in the initial proposal that was submitted to the City Council that were, in fact, in the City's watershed. Those have been uh, removed, if you will, uh, in the ordinances that are uh, proposed in the packet that you have before you uh, to just the two parcels that are city-owned land that are not within the city's watershed per the city engineer's determination uh, and the city engineer can get more into that uh, in detail when he's up here uh, but that based on feedback we received uh, uh, we proposed going forward with that shorter map which drops it from uh, over 460 uh, acres to 177 acres. Uh, there's only partial of one parcel that's included in that because a parcel is bisected by the North Central Pathway bike trail. Uh, so that's why the difference in adding up, uh, if you just look at the full acreage of the parcels on the city's GIS map. The public safety concerns first came up uh, when speaking with you know the two chiefs. Uh, since 2013, so just in the last 10 years, we've had 191 accidents on this section of Route 140. Of those 125 resulted in some type of bodily injury to those parties involved. Uh, when that came up, we started looking further, uh, and it's no secret that the city recently has begun the process of selling off some of the properties that uh, we either own and are not utilizing or have taken in tax title process. We've seen that with the, I believe, eight to nine properties that we've sold in the past two years. Uh, more recently, the six that we put up in the past month. Uh, and in looking at those, if we did this with land in this section of the area, there's a concern with the amount of housing production that would be in that uh, location. Just because this is area, this area is zoned rural residential free right now, there's nothing to stop it. If it were to go out for sale right now, uh, which is in its unprotected status, could uh, could result in about 126 homes being constructed in uh, this location, which adds increased traffic. Uh, that in an area that we already have large traffic concerns in terms of how fast people are driving on that road around while the speed limit is 50, uh, it's, it's 50 there, uh, we've tracked speeds up upwards of 75 uh, in that section of the uh, Route 140 area. So adding an additional 126 homes onto that would be increases in traffic there uh, would be a large concern for us in terms of public safety, in terms of public utilities. Uh, it, we estimate it costs between $300 and $500 per foot to install utilities into an area. Uh, if you look at the build-out study that uh, MRPC did of a, uh, the abutting section of Route 140, uh, could be close to you know, several thousand gallons of water uh, a day, but also around $5 million to just get utilities out to that site, let alone to those properties uh, that could be out there. And as we look forward in our development goals, uh, those all came to mind as concerns uh, that were raised for us there. And the reason why this even came up is that Garden is very lucky that we have a third of the city in protected open space. Close to 2,600 acres of land in Gardner is in protected open space. Uh, but there's a lot of land that's open and unprotected like these two parcels right now that in terms of development, Garden is a very land poor community. If we've got a, probably 12, 12 to 13 with the one we got today. Uh, businesses looking into the city that you know came in saying I need a minimum 70 acres of land uh, the most we got was 100 acres of land uh, that we have to turn everyone away uh, because we just simply don't have that here in Gardner uh, that's jobs that are leaving Gardner in terms of job creation that's a tax base uh, that we can't add uh, to help alleviate the burden that we place on our residential tax base here in Gardner there's a lot that's gone into Gardner in the past three years with 
Last year, 33 businesses opening. This year, seven businesses opening to date now. Gardner's getting a lot more economic attention right now on top of everything else that's going on. The Gardner's really ripe in this moment for us to be able to strengthen us for the future. Uh, the way that this property would go if the zoning change go, would go forward is the administration would place a request for disposition and surplus uh, to the city council for a vote. If that were to happen, there's a very stringent request for proposal process that Mass General Law Chapter 30B outlines. Uh, that's why uh, one of the questions we've received is who's, you know, who is this parcel for, things of that nature. We don't know because there's a strict RFP process that it has to go through these specific, very stringent judging rules in terms of best use of the property coming even before price of the property. Uh, so while we have had 13 interested businesses looking into the city and eight of them looking at land in this area of the city as well, it has to go through this RFP process. We can't decide, and that's why this law is put in place by the Inspector General's Office and inspected by the Inspector General Office to make sure that there's these safeguards in place, that there's no backroom deals happening. There's nothing like this. It's a very public competitive process to see who goes out uh, for those goals. And there's more information on that in your packet as well. In terms of the watershed concerns, uh, based off of the city's watershed uh, definition that's in chapter 632 of the city's ordinances, uh, none of these two parcels are in the city's watershed. Uh, portions of one and all of the other are in a zoning district designated as the Surface Water Protection Overlay District. That does not meet the same definition of watershed land, but what it does is further restricts what can be done if something is constructed within that zoning overlay. Uh, it's zoning, not watershed, that has a very scientific definition in terms of topography and distance from a water, uh, body of water that feeds into a public drinking water system. Uh, what this does is regulates further by requiring a special permit by the planning board if anything were to be constructed within that zoning overlay district. Uh, and in terms of the open space plans, we've done a uh, full deed search on these properties. Uh, we've gone through the votes that are there. If you look in the city's open space and recreation plan to go through the ways a property can be permanently protected, uh, the majority of them are through vote of the city council. None of, none of those actions have been done on either of these properties. Um, the deeds themselves are included in your packet now because there's no restrictions themselves on the deeds themselves. Uh, and uh, again, the open space and recreation plan, just like our master plan, our housing production plan, our economic development plan, our urban renewal plans, are plans that the city has in place with suggestions on how the city could move forward uh, if you know, that is the path the city takes, but it's not a full binding document. Uh, if there's any other questions uh, uh, in terms of any of the technical details of the economic development things, I'm certainly happy to answer those. Uh, really just the other thing that I'd just like to stress on this one is that the area is currently zoned rural residential. Um, there really is nothing that would prevent the city, or if it was private land, would prevent a private landowner right now for doing something with the land in terms of selling it. Um, but it's how we grow in a smart way and how we meet the development and demand needs that we're having right now in a smart way that meets the needs of the citizens who are moving here with the 10% increase in population that Gardner's been seeing, with the 526 or so housing units that are currently under construction within Gardner already permitted or under design. Uh, those are listed as item J in your packet that I've uh, presented to you. Um, in terms of the economic growth that the gardener has seen, we've seen a lot of smaller scale development in terms of those 33 smaller mom and pop stores that have opened in Gardner or those smaller retail chains that have opened. But we haven't been able to do something that really creates a large job base for economic growth for the city. So that's really something that we want to push forward. There's an old uh, saying that, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. And that's something that we want to make sure that Gardner is growing and meeting the needs that our uh, population is seeing because that's what we're hearing from the residents as to what they want to see in their city. So that's why the administration put this forward. Uh, but uh, I'd like to pass it over to the city engineer, Rob Oliver, just to go into a further technical discussions of the watershed uh, areas of the city and how these parcels relate to those areas. Thank you. Thank you, um, Just to start at the planning board's hearing on this matter, the question of watershed, um, came up in which parcels originally proposed for rezoning uh, were in the watershed. Um, that made me take a look at what we have mapped as watershed as well as what is mapped as the surface water protection overlay district. Uh, noting that they're two separate things. Technically what the watershed is, it's the watershed surrounding our three reservoirs, Crystal Lake, 
Harley Brook Reservoir and Nam John's Pond or Cowie Pond. Um, what the watershed is, is, is everywhere there's runoff within that land area that enters into a tributary, the reservoir, a surface water body that's connected to those reservoirs is considered watershed. The state currently maps uh, three zones within our watershed, and they do this for every community's drinking water supply. Um, the zone A, zone B, and zone C. Zone A represents 400 feet from the surface water body, so in this case, the three reservoirs, um, and then 200 feet within, uh, from within every tributary for those water bodies. Um, zone B represents, um, and these are, this is in your packet, zone B represents everything outside of zone A, which is within a half a mile of zone A, or the tributaries of the water body. Um, out to the limit of the watershed, so the physical limit of the watershed, which is dictated by topography. Finally, zone C is everything that's not zone A or zone C. So essentially everything within the watershed that's not zone A or zone B. Um, that, that's the definition of the watershed toward drinking water supply. Um, everything is technically in a watershed, but we're looking at our water supply to Crystal Lake, Pearly Brook, and Cowan Blind. Um, Second to that, the city has an overlay district, a zoning overlay district, which is called the Surface Water Protection Overlay District. And what that includes by definition in our zoning is um, it mimics zone A and zone B, which is prescribed by the state. And Gardner um, defines zone, a zone C plus, which is not zone C, but a little bit more um, encroaching than the zone C. It extends a little beyond what the state defines as zone C. Um, so in this rezoning package, uh, originally there were 12 parcels, um, two of which were not in the watershed. So those are the parcels that have been, uh, the proposal has been amended to remove those parcels. So there's two remaining parcels, uh, pretty much northerly approaching the Winchenden border that remain in the, the proposal and um, are not in the watershed. Now. They're not in the watershed, however, the zoning overlay district, which is not the watershed, um, does fully, uh, one of the parcels is in it and the other is touched by it. Um, the, the parcel that's north of 140 is within, the parcel sub, south of 140, um, the, I guess you'd call it the southeastern portion of that parcel is um, bisected by the overlay district. So the overlay district has its own requirements for um, development within it. Um, that so we have a, a section of zoning called watershed lands. The mayor touched on it a little bit, and it, by definition, it matches what the state maps as zone A, B, and C, which is our watershed. Um, I would consider those to be watershed lands, and as per the zoning, uh, uh, per the code, um, the city is not able to sell those properties. So um, they've been removed from this proposal. Um, and then the overlay district zoning of that district would govern for, for portions of those parcels um, in that district. And I believe a special permit through the planning board is required for um, development and permitting in the, on those parcels. Um, that's basically my presentation on what the watershed is and what the overlay district is. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my concerns come from 23 years of responding to accidents, uh, other traffic issues that have been up there as well. Um, the issue up on Route 140 are the speeds and the sight lines. Uh, in fact, I just I actually made a, uh, a call and then I sent an email to the, the DOT after our last fatal accident up there, which is, by the way, a stone throw from where this, this problem is being discussed. Uh, the speeds are they're highway speeds. Um, trying to introduce more vehicles into that road coming in and out of that road is it's not a it, it's going to make the, the situation more difficult in my opinion. Um, and that is just an opinion. But again, it's it's based on a lot of years of seeing what I see up there. Um, a lot the majority of the accidents up there when they do involve personal injury are relatively serious because again of the speeds. Um, even at 50 miles an hour. You know, a, a car crosses the center line, which is exactly what happened in the last fatal accident. Somebody crossed the center line and hit another vehicle on coming the other way. Um, there's no permanent delineator. Um, there's just there's too many variables to introduce another 
200 or whatever homes out there. Um, again, I'd be happy to speak to anybody about the, 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 the types of access we see and the, and, the, and the volume, but again, all you have to do is go out there at rush hour. You, you look at rush hour times and you see the volume of traffic. It, it's, it's significantly increased over the past 10 years, uh, so there, therein lies our concerns with that. So I, I, I'd be happy to take any questions if anybody has any questions or concerns about that. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask the City Councils and Planning Board members to hold their questions until present citizens have had an opportunity um, to speak and ask their questions. I declare the public hearing now open. Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Please come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Good evening, my name is Warner Pogel and I live at 39 Orchard Lane in Templeton, Massachusetts, about eight tenths of a mile from the city of Gardner. I came here to hopefully convince you not to screw up on this one. I talked to one of the counselors before the meeting and he said, this is open space. Well, it's not open space. And you don't have to be afraid of saying no to open space because the city of Gardner has three times the amount of open space that any city of this size already has. The planning board did not act with common sense in this matter. With current zoning, the Route 140 area could be developed into hundreds of homes with much greater impact on the environment, public safety, and city resources than a limited number of commercial businesses this zoning change would allow. History can be a lesson as to what not to do. Templeton acted too slow. Guess what happened? Market Basket and the plaza along with it was built in Athol. Winchenden acted too slowly, and guess what happened? Walmart located in Ringe, New Hampshire. So what's going to happen here? Over some years, houses would be built along Route 140, costing Gardner nothing but money and public safety aggravation. Meanwhile, Winchenden will finally get its act together, and the businesses could be built just over the line in Winchenden, drawing people away from rather than towards Gardner. So common sense tells us, approve the mayor's request. Just common sense. Right now, Gardner is growing by just 105 residents per year. And there's already hundreds and hundreds of new housing units in the pipeline with projects we already know about. Common sense tells us there's always an environmental impact in whatever we do. But we don't stop driving. We don't stop heating our homes. We don't stop eating fast food. The planning board member who spoke at the last meeting, he stated he joined the planning board to protect open space recreation. But he didn't consider that Gardner has already been doing a job with that, with the wildlife sanctuary, the new parks coming this year, Mackey Park, Park Street Park, continuing efforts with the bike trail, which will eventually have a bridge over Route 140. If you compare Gardner's percentage of open space versus the open space in other small cities, Gardner has already allocated more than the average, more than enough. This is not open space. Don't be misled by the planning board or any other person here to say that it is open space. It's not open space. Gardner's been great in creating a balance of 22 square miles of land. A thousand people per square mile, or one person every 500 feet, think of that. In Boston, there's one person every 25 feet. In the interest of common sense, approve the mayor's request. Not the watered down request he put forward because he got some initial flack, but the initial request, there's already restrictions in place. This proposal shouldn't be mischaracterized as somehow upsetting the environment when it simply helps complete the balanced approach the mayor's been taking over the past couple of years, helping to get properties back on the tax rolls, both private and city owned. Excuse me, you reach about three minutes if you can wrap up. I will wrap up. Thank you. And finally, your constituents, the voters, your employers, the people who will vote for you or not vote for you at the next election, 
They want you to vote for this because they've been asking for more business in this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who wishes to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? There, we did receive a letter from the Greater Gardner Chamber of Commerce that I believe is included um, on our desks as well as it's in our packet. Does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Please come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. My name is Alan Russo, I reside at 211 Bank Spring Road. Uh, and I've got a brief letter, just a page and a half. I'd be happy to uh, make some copies for the council and the board if I may. Yes, please. please. <clears throat> Dear City Council and Planning Board members, I'm writing you about the subject zoning ordinance amendment 10891. I'm a longtime resident of Gardner. Since 2005, I've been a member of the Board of Directors for the North County Land Trust, the NCLP. And as such, I've been an advocate for conservation in Gardner and the cities and towns in the NCLT service area. Based on the information I've received prior to tonight's meeting, uh, tonight's joint public hearing, I'm opposed to this zoning ordinance amendment. Overall, the information in the amendment has been changing significantly over the past couple, two weeks. Over the weekend, I downloaded the meeting package and found 104 pages were added to a 191 page package. I think the process should be slowed down so that all the information can be absorbed by the public. My comments are grouped in the following bulletized areas. The first one is safety along this section of Route 140. Uh, the mayor cited accident statistics, as well as the chief elaborated on those. But the best way to promote safety and save lives is not to rezone and not to sell these open space parcels. And they are open space parcels. Open space is, design, is uh, defined as undeveloped land. Bullet point two, open space is of high value to guide. Open space provides clean air and clean water to our community. Open space recreation enhances the lives of Gardner residents and attracts visitors to our city. We must protect open space for Gardner's future generations, not just ours. Watersheds for Bailey Brook and Wilder Brook. Two parcels are in proximity to Bailey and Wilder. Bailey Brook Gardner's only cold water fisheries brook flows from Winchington to Helchi Pond and then to the Otter River. Wilder flows from North Gardner to Parker's Pond and then to the Otter River. To date, I've not seen a mapping of these watersheds relative to these parcels. Open space protects these important Gardner resources. Bullet number four, Rome Conservation Area, RCA, and the North Central Pathway Bike Trail. One parcel abets the Rome Conservation Area, the other one abets the bike trail. As such, these city-owned parcels provide essential buffers between the RCA and the, and the bike trail and Route 40, which pretty much comes down the middle. When you're out there, you feel like you're in the woods and it does buffer a lot of the traffic sound from the highway. Bullet five, not fair to existing residents, not fair. The residents of this area were not notified of this rezoning amendment. I'm sure most of these existing residents purchased their homes with the understanding that these parcels were protected by open space. The city should at least have sent letters to the residents. Excuse me, Mr. Russo, you've reached over three minutes. If you can just wrap up, please. Okay, I will. I'm on bullet number six, so Thank you. I'm pretty much there, Madam President. Planning Board opposition. The Planning Board, after capital deliberation of these two meetings, voted unanimously not to support this amendment. I attended both of these meetings 
and agree with the concerns raised during the discussion on the amendment. I do, not, I do support the city's projects for commercial development in the appropriate locations. The city should continue to do what they're doing, repurpose previously developed land and existing buildings. The city should not sell city-owned open space. I do not support this proposed zoning amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? I wasn't really prepared to say anything, but please, please state your name and your address for the record. What'd you say? Please yeah. state yes. your name you and your address. Your name and address where you live. You have to say your oh. name and where you live. Patrick Fisher, Fourth uh, Street, Templeton, Mass. But, but I own the land on 47, partial 47, uh, 17, 6, which is abuts both those pieces of property. And so I was sent a letter to come down to this public hearing on March 28th. It was sent to me on March 28th for March 20th to come here for the meeting. And I have the letter right here, postmark March 28th. But I, I'm not mad about that, but I, I, I'm concerned for my property because I wanted to put a two-family there, and I have I, I, I love children, so I want young people to have children to be in the home, and I don't want commercial building right beside it or parking lot endanger the kids or more traffic to endanger the kids. And that's about all I really have to say. I'm against it for that reason. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else here that wishes to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Are the maps here? Can I speak from up here? You have to speak at the microphone, mic please. Yeah, thank you. Has my time already started? No, go ahead. <laughs> <It's> about to. <laughs> my name is Dave Antea, and I live at 444 Stone Street in uh, Gardner, and I am against this uh, proposal. And <clears throat> I'm curious on the lot, because this has all changed, like Al had mentioned. Uh, the proposal has changed as far as acreage. So I was wondering how many acres are now on the right parcel and the left parcel? 120. Um, Mr. Mayor or um, City Engineer. Do I? Yes, uh, I'm having that present. There's 120 on the parcel below. Okay. Uh, and doing math in my head because there's it's 177 acres total right um because the top parcel is only partial parcel the Indian part north of the north central pathway so the bike so that would be about 57 acres on the, on the right side okay well part of my point is the mayor mentioned that he had a couple of people that were interested in a hundred plus acres to develop so now we basically have one person that might uh, by the parcel on the left, and now we have uh, the parcel on the, the right where we can have, I, I know if this goes through multiple businesses, but part of uh, what I'm curious about, because there is so much talk about the traffic, if traffic is such a, a major issue here, why are we even interested in trying to develop this and create more traffic in a very dangerous area. Uh, we're looking at 129 houses total. And so if we're looking at the houses that the uh, study 13 years ago that has been referenced about this area and traffic is that <clears throat> we could have a number of uh, curb cuts on the left parcel that would go up onto 140, and on the parcel on the right, 
you're only going to probably be able to put in one uh, driveway for vehicles to come in and out. So if you have commercial uh, businesses there, you're going to have trailer trucks, I imagine, for delivery that are going to try and come across there. That's pretty dangerous. Um, the, the other thing is that <clears throat> there was uh, an issue mentioned about the water and uh, septic that might be uh, affected if this was all houses. I'm wondering, uh, is there been any study or way to analyze the type of business that might go there and how much water or septic they may, may use? I know the mayor mentioned that if we had a commercial venture that they might pipe the water uh, and pay for it for the, for the city. But what if they don't? How are they going to handle the septic and, and the use of water if they're a commercial outfitter? And one of the suggestions was a hotel. I'm wondering how much water does a hotel use and how much septic do you need um, to have their wastewater for the septic and possibly going into our open space area or watershed uh, area. Mr. Ortega, you've hit over three minutes, if you could wrap up. All right. The only last question I had is, when we're talking about traffic, has there been any recent study on traffic and comparing it to if we had houses there or a commercial uh, venture, and how would that affect or the result of that study for the traffic in that area? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Come on up to the podium. Just state your name and address for the record, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, Anna Wilkins, uh, 17 Water Street, Ashburnham. Um, I do work for North County Land Trust, and the parcel uh, in question on the left, the 120-acre parcel, does abut our room conservation area. Um, and I was, uh, I'm. I was very impressed with the um, mayor's proposal and packet, really thorough and well thought out. But um, I, uh, two things that were missing for me, one was current use. Um, that is not vacant land. It has Old Eaton Street on it, which is very popular, at recreational trail. And it includes, uh, I don't know if uh, there's any old snowmobilers here, but there used to be the old covered bridge over Wilder Brook. Um, there was a memorial bridge um, that recently a, um, a um, uh, Eagle Scout rebuilt as part of their project. Um, the trails in there are used by mountain bikers, they're used by hikers, dog walkers, families, uh, cross-country skiers. Uh, there's, we also run programs on the Rome Conservation Area with our partner entity, Jump, which uh, does youth development through outdoor adventure and from our Rome Conservation Area often travel onto the city's trails. And it is true that Gardner has amazing uh, open space land, especially up in this area. And what it does, another thing that was missing from the proposal that I felt was super important was the conservation context. So this, these parcels are uh, surrounded by permanently protected land. And what you get there is a block of habitat up there. If you develop that with housing or with commercial, you are fragmenting that. Now, I don't know if there's any hunters in here, but that is also a very popular hunting area. And uh, putting commercial or any sort of development up in there is going to fragment that habitat. I mean, did everybody see that moose that was down in Timothy Boulevard? I mean, where are these, I mean, when you start to push fragment these large habitat blocks, blocks you are interrupting that and I, I, I really understand the, the reasoning behind this proposal and I totally get it. I am not anti-commercial development, I'm not anti-housing, I'm not anti, anti any of that, but I think in particular this piece of property which until recently a lot of us assumed was protected open space and was happy about that. Um, I think it's not the, the right place for commercial development. Um, and I guess I'll 
Thank you. Does anybody else wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Okay. Um, to the city councilors and planning board members, are there any questions or comments, or would anyone like to be heard on the matter? Councilor Walsh? Yes, I have a few questions for the chief and for the mayor. First, for the mayor, um, if I may, Mayor, uh, there was an attachment B to your written uh, submission that uh, is the revised zoning amendment. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that reduces the uh, parcels to be under consideration for rezoning from 12 to 4. Or, excuse me, from 12 to 2. Correct. correct. Yes. And both of those parcels, those two parcels that are identified in red up there on the map, are both owned by the city. Is that correct? That is correct. And is it your desire that the council substitute this attachment B for the zoning amendment proposal that you originally submitted? That would be my desire, yes, council. Okay. Uh, the a portion of the left the left side of that uh, parcel and all of the right side of that parcel are in the uh, surface water. Protection Overlay District, correct? Correct, Council. And the, that's uh, engaged in, or identified in Chapter 675-550 of our zoning code. And it, uh, Section 8 says the purpose of the Surface Water Protection Overlay District is to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the community by ensuring an adequate qual quantity, quality and quantity of drinking water for residents, institutions, and businesses. Number two, to pres preserve and protect existing and potential sources of drinking water supplies. Three, to conserve the natural resources of the city. And four, to prevent temporary and permanent contamination of the environment. Is it your belief that this proposal is consistent with those purposes? Uh, it is, Councillor. Uh, we have not looked at any potential water sources out in this area of the city, uh, and all of the factors later on in this section of the ordinances in terms of oversight of the planning board for a special permit, uh, development codes in terms of the health code that the health department would have to approve any well or septic system uh, out in that area as well. So there's a second check over there. So I do believe uh, this proposal to be consistent with this uh, section of the ordinance, particularly with the purposes uh, previously stated. The other question I have for you, if I may, Mr. Mayor, is that you've relied upon the 2010, uh, 2010 Constitution Regional Planning uh, uh, Study in support of your pro uh, proposition for your proposed ordinance amendments. And I'm wondering why you did that, because the, these parcels are specifically excluded from that study. And the study focuses on the area between, uh, uh, in the area of Matthew Street in 140, and the development, development areas in that region, not in this northerly part. And I'm wondering why you relied on that study when the, the parcels that you are proposing for rezoning are, in, are specifically excluded from that study. Uh, that's actually a great uh, question, Councillor. In part B, so page uh, three of the packet that I have before you, I explained uh, that specific item there, that while this is an area that was not included in that study, we see very close similarities. Uh, in this area of the city that we see in the section that was studied there in terms of traffic concerns, speeding, uh, in terms of build-out analysis, in terms of let me just look at my, uh, the, the zone, current zoning there with the minimum uh, frontage requirements of 150 feet and minimum eight, uh, lot size of 6,000 square feet. Uh, the population uh, trends that we saw for the census tracts in the 2000 cen uh, uh, census that check this section of the city now very, very, very much mirror what we're seeing in this northern uh, part of 140 as well, uh, and the trends that we're seeing citywide really. So while this is not um, specifically called out in that MRPC study, as I said in my uh, letter, it's very similar. And we see very, very, very distinct parallels in this area of 140 to what we're seeing in that study area of 140. Thank you. No. I have a question for the chief. Thank you, Chief. Yes, Your concern primarily is, is public safety as it relates to potential 
access and egress locations along these parcels. Is that correct? That's correct, Council. Because the, the more access and egress locations there are along these parcels, the more dangerous it becomes. Potentially, yes. So if there are no access or egress, uh, so what? Less is better, correct? Potentially, but I think that, that we need to take a few other things into consideration. Well, from a public safety point of view, though, it, yes, from a correct. traffic point of view, the fewer the better, correct? Yes, Council. And if there's none, that's the best. <laughs> and that, I feel like I'm on the stand. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> Would you agree? <laughs> None, none is best. Is that correct? Yes, Council. That would be correct. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so here we go again. Gardner is trying to restrict us putting in any kind of development that will bring in tax dollars to the city. And we, we do that over and over. And the mayor already explained we have more open space than any other community around. And to say, well, Route 140 is uh, a lot of traffic, and well, well, how about down in Ringe? They, they built uh, Walmart and Hannaford and, and, and everything else down there. And, and Route, uh, what, we're going to block Walmart from Route 68? Yeah. Stop. We have more open space than we need, so let's do something right and make it better for the city and bring in some commercial property to help the taxpayers. Otherwise, it's us, us single family homeowners that are paying the taxes. So, I, I, granted, I, I know this came upon us um, recently. Maybe we need some more time on it, but I agree with the mayor. Let's, let's promote building and, and give some commercial property areas to the to the developers maybe not uh, homeowners maybe you know it's too many but I, I still kind of question that I, I just you know disagree that everybody's blocking development in Gardner thank you madam president thank you councillor any further questions comments from the planning board the city councillors council tyros thank you madam president uh as a city councillor's actually hunted on that land uh, that's being proposed with my grandfather uh, many years ago. Uh, I you know, acknowledge the comments of recreation and preservation, but I do have a question because uh, a question's been raised about safety, um, traffic safety, uh, to the mayor and the police chief. Uh, I won't cross-examine as much, but uh, I'm hoping you could give an example because you mentioned that uh, when a commercial development comes in, there may be public safety measures that could be put in place to make the road safer. I know further up the road, just a couple of miles, the uh, Milek facility uh, that was installed, I think there's a flashing light. Is that the sort of measure that we're talking about? Yes, there's several orders and conditions that the planning board can put in place for a site plan approval for a commercial development. Uh, we saw this most recently with the new community health center off of uh, Route 68 uh, near the former stop and shops, to be Ollie's and Walmart. Uh, in terms of you know, traffic lights, the way the parking lot is laid out, the way the parking lot relates in size compared to what the building's intended use is. Uh, in some cases, a traffic light, uh, the Route 68 project with the Community Health Center, we were able to see turning lanes uh, put in there too. Uh, so there's a lot of different other safety measures that can be put into a commercial development through the site plan approval process and the development review committee process that you don't get in terms of housing development. Even if there is a subdivision put out there or subdivision regulations, may have some controls there, uh, but then you're still looking at uh, increased traffic in terms of driveways where it's just more in and out. Rather, with commercial development, there's a lot more teeth the city has to controlling traffic in the area uh, and regulating it a lot more stringently than if it was just regular residential development. So it would be of your opinion that less may not always be more? When regulated the correct way. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Geith? Um, I just want to go ahead and I, I want to back up with uh, Councilor Boone went ahead and said. I, I do a lot of supermarkets and things like that on my personal job. Um, and I sit here and I look at what Gardner used to be and I see the developments that I go to and things like that. Gardner used to be, you know, Chair City. 
Um, that's what we're known for. No chairs are being made here anymore. But um, we have companies like ACT that's made, made a home here. We have companies like Siemens makes a home here. You know, I'm going to the NFL draft this year and, you know, it's cool to be able to say, hey, look at all the confetti at the Super Bowls made right in Gardner. You know what I mean? So, like, to be able to go ahead and have those opportunities or give a chance for another business to come here, I think that that's great. Um, you know, we're talking about accidents. Those last, I think, well, last three fatal accidents, I actually knew some of the people. So, you know, and I think that was since October. I think there's been three fatal since October. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's about October, right? Because it was two and then it was one. Oh, one and two. So, like, um, again, I, I, I knew them. So, for someone in has their own kids driving up and down 140, and I know how fast I used to drive, not, not anymore, but I know how fast I, um, I used to drive up there. Um, it is a little racetrack. Um, a lot of things happen really fast over there, and, um, you know, I just want to say, you know, I think it's a great opportunity, and I actually want to thank the mayor for even putting this in front of us to even give us the opportunity to try to bring more business more opportunities here. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Tosoni. Thank you, Madam President. Um, people always say, look to the future. Uh, and yet, we continue to put up roadblocks to the future. Um, this is a potential traffic driver for our business and our local, our local businesses in downtown Gardner, throughout, throughout the city. This is the potential to make Gardner more of a destination than it already is. We have many resources in the city of Gardner and, and many businesses in the city of Gardner growing. For us to, to, to try to block this piece when the mayor is trying to look to the future for growth, I, I think is a mistake because I, I see commercial opportunity there and I, and I work in a commercial industry as well. Um, and it's only going to help uh, the surrounding businesses in the downtown area, the surrounding businesses in Gardner, and make Gardner more of a destination, more than what it already is. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Further questions, comments from the Planning Board or City Council? Uh, I will declare the joint public hearing on item 10891 now closed. Uh, we will move on to Item number 10892. In order to amend the code of the city of Gardner, chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning to add sports betting to the zoning table of uses. We have a quorum here. Uh, the, uh, I'd like to request a report from the planning board, Director Beargard. Thank you, Madam President. Um, at its meeting on March 22, 2023, the Planning Board voted unanimously 5 to 0 to recommend approving the proposed zoning amendment. Um, if the proposed zoning amendment is approved, the Planning Board recommends rewording of number 54 of the table of uses. Um, would you like me to read what we propose into the record? Yes. Uh, it, we're recommending it read indoor amusement, fitness, recreational place, place of assembly, or a sports betting facility, provided that the building is so insulated and maintained as to confine noise to the premises and is located not less than 100 feet from a residential district. It's the same wording that the petitioner used. It just moves for a sports betting facility from the last five words of the paragraph um, to um, it, it's, it's placed after place of assembly instead. So it's part of the overall paragraph of permit. Thank you, Director Berger. Uh, in, in, in addition, Madam President, I have one other um, Comment. In addition, uh, due to the potential significant scope and complexity of such a project, if implemented under the submitted zoning, the board recommends changing use table 
for number 54 from permitted by right to special permit by the planning board for commercial one and commercial two zones. And number 56 from permitted by right to special permit planning board for commercial two and industrial one zones. That's the end of the report. Thank you, Director Beauregard. Uh, Mayor Nicholson, uh, will you please give a presentation on the proposed zoning amendment at this time? Just before you go ahead, I just want to um, announce that we have a regular city council meeting starting at 7.30. Should we hit 7.30 for the hearing, I will recess the hearing, open the regular city council meeting at that time, recess that meeting, and reopen the public hearing as I think in a matter time we should be able to finish up this evening. Um, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. This is a very technical proposal and with a legal background. Uh, in May of 2018, the United States Supreme Court struck down what was known as the Bradley Act, which regulated sports betting nationwide to only 10 states across the nation. Uh, this was in a lawsuit initiated by the state of New Jersey that said basically this was a violation of the 10th Amendment because it regulated what states were able to perform sports betting and what states were not. The Supreme Court agreed with the state of New Jersey by saying that since the 10th Amendment says that all rights uh, for the federal government, all those rights listed in the Constitution not reserved for the federal government are reserved for the states. Therefore, since this pit one state against the other, uh, it was a violation of the Constitution and thus throughout that act, thus legalizing sports betting nationwide. Uh, in August of last year, Governor Charlie Baker signed into law the Sports Betting Act in Massachusetts, which regulates it through the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. The First Amendment has been interpreted several different ways and several different times uh, throughout the nation's history to determine that when a business is looking to locate in a location and it is a legal enterprise within uh, the Commonwealth, you cannot forbid it from opening its doors within your community. You can only regulate where it goes. This ordinance is looking to regulate where those businesses go and uh, keep those with the commercial and industrial districts. That way, if a sports betting facility wants to come to Gardner, uh, they would not end up in a residential neighborhood or anything like that. Only those places zoned where it would properly take place. We expect these uh, to be companies that would come in more on a kiosk basis as the three allowable uses uh, for sports betting for the uh, for the uh, law that was passed are retail sites, the three retail sites statewide that have been approved are the three casinos in Plainville, uh, Everett, and Springfield. There are 10 approved mobile apps, that's any just phone, sports betting. Um, anything else would just be kiosk locations. So this would be similar to what you see the Kino machines uh, in different places or the scratch ticket vending machines there. However, they'd be a lot more regulated in Massachusetts per the act that was signed, an application from the Massachusetts Gaming Commissions to open a facility to house these is a non-refundable $200,000 application fee itself. And then additionally from that, if you are awarded a license, an in-person license is a $5 million annual license and an online license is a $7 million annual license. So these would be companies that would have a large financial backing behind them. So they are heavily regulated by the Commonwealth. Uh, we don't know if one will come to Gardner, but I just, where this is now a legal enterprise, that the city has to allow to open in the city per how this First Amendment has been interpreted. We want to make sure we're regulating it, regulating it to the places it's supposed to be in the city. We're not saying no, we're just saying if these places want to come, it's appropriate for them to go in the commercial and industrial zone areas of the city. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, city council and planning board members, um, please hold your questions until the present citizens have had an opportunity to speak and ask their questions. Uh, before I declare the public hearing open, I am going to um, recess this public hearing. The meeting is now in recess. And I'm going to open the uh, city council meeting in about 30 seconds. Seeing it as it is 7.30, I would like to call the Monday, April 3rd, 2023, regular meeting of the Gardner City Council to order. The clerk will please call the roll. Council Boone? Present. <clears throat> Council Tassone? Present. Council Craig Cormier? Present. Council Rhonda Cormier? Present. Council Derlowitz? Present. Council Harder? Present. Council Heath? Present. Council Matt? Council Tyros? Present. Council Walsh? Present. And President Kaczynski.
President, please rise for the opening prayer and give us our Almighty God, we thank Thee for bringing us together this evening, inspire us to work in deeds and sound decisions, direct us toward the kingdom and the city government. We pray in the name of us to protect all the people of our city, and to so guide and inspire us that we may deliberate in unity and harmony. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Any person may make a video or audio recording of an open session of a meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium subject to reasonable requirements of the chair as to the number, placement, and operation of equipment used so as not to interfere with the conduct of the meeting. Any person intending to make such recordings shall notify the chair forthwith. All documents and exhibits used or reference at the meeting must be submitted in duplicate to the chair as they become part of the meeting minutes pursuant to General Law Chapter 38, Subsection 20. Is anyone here recording tonight's meeting? Okay, I'm going to now, we're going to take a brief recess of this meeting and we will reopen it um, after we've completed the joint public hearing. The meeting is not recessed. The joint public hearing is um, now called back to order. Mayor Nicholson is going to give um, further information. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Uh, uh, further than what was previously stated, uh, the new statute also requires that if any of these businesses would like to open within the city of Gardner, they're required to enter into a host community agreement with the city that will require city council approval before they open, uh, actually before they submit their license to the Commonwealth. So you cannot reach the Mass Gaming Commission for your application until you've agreed by city council vote to open your establishment in Gardner. Uh, unlike the cannabis host community agreements that are now under judicial review for requiring certain items like a community impact fee or a charitable donation. Those have been affirmed by the courts for the sports betting facilities. Uh, additionally, on top of a general community impact fee and a charitable donation requirement to a charity within uh, the city's limits, uh, they also require a, if there's any type of a broadcasting event that's done there in terms of watching a game and having people come to bet on the game in your facility, they're actually required to pay a simulcast fee of, four, uh, I believe, 2.6% of whatever they intake from that uh, event to the city in a tax. Uh, so there's additional fees there, financial benefits for the city. Uh, so the city council would have to approve that HCA and the license. So after the gaming commission gives the license, the city council would then have to vote to reaffirm their vote in the host community agreement and allow them to get a license from the city. Uh, and then the planning board would have jurisdiction over uh, the, if the special permit goes through, but also through the development review process uh, as outlined in the city zoning ordinances already. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, I'd like to ask City Council the planning board members to hold their questions until present citizens have had an opportunity to speak and ask their questions. I'd like to declare the public hearing open. Again, this is on item 10892. Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Okay, does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Are there any questions or comments, or would anyone else like to be heard from the Planning Board of the City Council on the matter? Councilor Walsh? I have a question for the petitioner, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you've asked that sports betting be included in two different uses within the commercial zone. Uh, one of them is 54 indoor amusement, fitness, or recreational place or place of, uh, place of assembly. And I understand that it might be one of the kiosks uh, lo locations that, that you've described as one of the permitted types of sports betting that are allowed under the statute. Yes, sir. But you've also uh, included sports betting in section 56, 
public or commercial out outdoor amusement or recreation use, but not including outdoor driving and movie theater. And I'm trying to envision what type of sports betting facility would be an outdoor type facility. There are three listed under the statute, Counselor. Um, happy to go into those three. Uh, the first is if a facility that has the kiosks type of facility, uh, if they want to do a simulcast event on an outdoor venue, so an outdoor movie style, um, style type thing where there's a screen on the outside, people can watch and bet on the location. That's uh, use number one that's allowed on an outdoor venue. Use number two would be if there's a festival at the location, um, it would allow people to go both in and out of uh, the facility if there's a festival on the outside while the betting is taking place inside you still have to count that as one event uh, so that's use number two and i believe section six of the statute but i'd have to check the specific section the third permittable use is if there's anything with horses uh, because horses are protected agricultural class in massachusetts right now is an endangered state species or protected a special protected species is what the state officially calls it um, those are the three permittable outdoor uses the reason for the proposed zoning amendment in 54 and 56 is to make sure the city's bases are covered uh, in any event for those matters. So 56 would include something like what was proposed in Hardwick? It could fit something like that, yes, that is correct. Indoor use with a kiosk and an outdoor, at least seasonal horse race. Uh, for 56? 56. For an outdoor, yeah, that could, be, that could be something that fits in those. There's other categories that fit in there for those three different items, but that is something that could fit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything further from the Planning Board of the City Council? Councilor Heath? Um, actually, I have a question for the Mayor. So, thank you for being proactive, um, again, um, because I think that uh, getting ahead of everything is way better than being behind, um, as we see with everything nowadays. Um, has there been any interest coming for these sports betting facilities coming to Gardner? There have. Uh, there's been one indoor and one outdoor. Um, facility that have both been expressed interest in the city. Uh, those took, we received information from them last August. Uh, we originally said no because we didn't have land that, not land that fit those, but we didn't have it in the table of uses yet. Uh, so that's where we were uh, able to, <coughs> once we started to see these pop up in other places and see that other places are doing this now, it's one of those that we wanted to take care of. Um, and if I may, Madam President, one thing I neglected for Councilor Walsh's question, and I apologize for that, Councilor. If there is an event like what was, or a situation like what was in Hardwick where there is an outdoor equine center or horsing center, um, that would require an additional three votes of the City Council for different other levels of uh, Chapter 128A, I believe, of the general laws uh, in terms of licensing requirements and layout. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, the other thing is, is, if this gets passed, I think before a lifetime, you know, we, we, we sit here and say thank you for being proactive, but I mean, decades and decades ago, Gardner was called G Vegas. Um, <laughs> are we going to live up to that term? Stole my thunder. <laughs> 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 that is all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Booth? Yeah, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Councilor Heath, the uh, G Vegas, I was hoping we could get a sports betting coming in, but geez, the fees get uh, outstanding. My God, can, can you just go over them real quickly, if, if you don't mind, Absolutely Madam President? Absolutely. Uh, uh, so the fees associated with sports betting in a non-horse racing situation, uh, it, there is a $200,000 non-refundable application fee that goes to the State Gaming Commission. That uh, is, if the application is approved or denied, that has to be due. If the application is approved and you want an in-person license, it's a $5 million annual license from the Commonwealth. If you want an online uh, betting uh, license, that's a $7 million license. If you want to open a facility that has both uh, online for things that are happening or an in-person situation as well, you are required to get both licenses at a cost of $12 million. <laughs> Uh, in terms of revenue for the city, the host community agreement requires a minimum $500,000 community impact fee uh, negotiated in a host community agreement. So a minimum of $500,000 per year, the life of the contract would come to the city. Uh, if there is a situation of a simulcast in terms of a uh, indoor kiosk venue showing a, uh, a, th uh, a game going on, I'm not a music guy, I was a sports guy, so give me a second with the terminology. Uh, that would result in a $2.6 profit fee directly to the city in the form of a tax uh, for simulcasting in the event of a horse 
uh, facility that would require a 5% simulcast fee because that's the race that gets broadcasted out, so that has a larger uh, fee associated with it. Uh, so there's a lot more different levels in terms of that, uh, but in terms of what the state gets, they get a boatload more than what we get, but the city would be guaranteed a minimum $500,000 a year. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything further from the Planning Board or the City Council? Okay, I will declare this uh, joint public hearing on this item closed, and we will move on to the final item, item 10893, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning, to amend section 1070 thereof, entitled Marijuana Establishments, to increase the quota allowed by the code of the City of Gardner. We have a quorum present. Um, I'd like to request a report from the Planning Board, Director Beauregard. Thank you, Madam President. Um, at its meeting, at the Planning Board meeting on March 22nd, 2023, the Planning Board voted unanimously five to zero to recommend approving the proposed amendment. Next, the other report. Thank you, Director Beauregard. Mayor Nicholson, um, we'll give a presentation on the proposed amendment at this time. Thank you very much, Madam President. I'll be brief on this one. This one is related to how Several communities, including Gardner, reacted when cannabis was legalized for retail sale purposes in Massachusetts in 2019. There were several different restrictions and regulations that were put in place. One of the items that's been put in place recent, uh, through statute that's allowable is that a community could regulate the total number of cannabis facilities that are able to open in their location, up to 20% of their liquor licenses. Uh, Gardner did that exact thing. We have uh, It's package store licenses that those liquor licenses are for. Uh, so it's, for purchase, for off-premise consumption in Gardner that really only affects the packaging stores that we have. We have 10 liquor package stores uh, in Gardner, so 20% of that is two. That's where we've gotten our two. One has been opened since 2019. We had the second one that opened in the Commonwealth, the Sanctuary over on Pearson Boulevard. The other location has had a host community agreement tied up uh, for the past several years uh, due to finance issues and construction cost issues and the pandemic and changing hands from one LLC to the other, they have not begun uh, the work on their facility up until two weeks ago. Uh, so that took, uh, agreement has been tied up with them. The city legally could not offer it to anyone else because we had a signed contract with them. And those agreements are good for a period of seven years. What this would do for the city is open up those reins a little bit now that we have five years of data that shows that these uh, facilities really don't have the impact that we feared that they would have. There's not a big public safety impact uh, that we're seeing. The traffic impacts are mitigated. Uh, there is a financial benefit for the city. We've taken in $1.5 million in fees from these cannabis uh, facilities in the past five years from that one facility alone, um, with the hype being during 2020 and 2021, where those businesses were not required to be shut down as part of the pandemic shutdown, mm -hmm. as it was considered a harm reduction. Uh, by the Commonwealth. Uh, so we, we've seen a financial benefit from the city end. What this would really do is double, uh, for lack of a better term, the number uh, that would be allowed in the city from two to four. So we're not fully opening the floodgates, but just opening excuse me, those restrictions a little bit and slowly letting things flow a little more to create more of a free market enterprise in terms of this business uh, field, uh, rather than a restricted field. We, quite frankly, I think the market will regulate itself in this manner, and we saw this a couple years ago when we had the four smoke shops and the one vape shop downtown. Uh, we did not go out and market those businesses. They came to Gardner and opened on their own, and they closed on their own and consolidated from five different locations into one because that's what the market demanded, and they didn't see the demand there in order to keep all of those businesses open and consolidated into one. Granted, the vape shop had some regulation issues with the state, uh, but really, I don't think they would have lasted much longer anyway. Uh, based on what they were telling the city at that time. And I think this would happen here too. If the market is there, the market will control itself. And uh, rather than restrict the financial benefit the city could see as a result of this, let the market be the market in reality. And I know the chief is here to talk about how we really haven't seen those public safety concerns that we initially thought of in 2019. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions after that. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> um, I, like uh, others, was a little bit skeptical when these, uh, the cannabis was, uh, was legalized. Um, we have not seen anything come to fruition that was initially kind of 
the doomsday thing that was thrown at us. Um, in fact, research in calls, we don't really respond to sanctuary for much other than general calls, alarm calls, um, maybe assist citizen calls, things like that. We're really nothing remarkable. I've spoken with other uh, police chiefs who have um, cannabis facilities in their, their municipalities. There's really nothing remarkable that comes from, from anything there. Um, the Cannabis Control Commission heavily regulates this. Um, they're covered by surveillance cameras pretty much every, every inch of retail space. Um, I have no concerns from what I've seen uh, expanding this. Uh, again, I'd be happy to take any questions if anybody has any, but um, there's really no particular concern here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, at this time, um, again, I'll ask the City Council and Planning Board members to hold their questions until present citizens have had an opportunity to speak and ask their questions. Um, and I will declare this public hearing open. Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in favor of the proposed zoning amendment? Okay, does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Does anyone wish to be heard in opposition of the proposed zoning amendment? Okay, if there are any city council or planning board members that have questions or comments at this time, please raise your hand. Seeing that there are none, I declare the joint public hearing now closed. Thank you very much. On this item, the whole joint public hearing is now closed. And thank you, everyone. We're going to call the Monday, April 3rd, 2023, regular meeting with Gardner City Council back to order. We will begin with the... Um, there are no reading of the minutes of prior meetings. We have no minutes. Um, we will. We have no public hearings. At this time, we're going to take items 10949 and 10950 out of order. Item 10949, a measure confirming the mayor's appointment of Bryant Pawlowski to the position of permanent police officer from the Appointments Committee, Council Carroll. Thank you, Madam President. The committee met with the appointee, the mayor, and the police chief to discuss the appointment. The mayor reported that the appointee is in his third week of field training with the department and comes to the Gardner fully academy trained with previous experience at Quinn Sigmund Community College. The chief reported positively and that the training completion will be early June. Officer Pulaski has enjoyed working in the department so far and looks forward towards interacting with the community, especially at the skate park as he is a former semi-pro skateboarder. The committee voted uh, to recommend, therefore I move the appointment be certified. Second the motion. Motion made by Councillor Tyro, seconded by Councillor Walsh to confirm the mayor's appointment. Is there a discussion on the motion? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Item 10950, a measure confirming the mayor's appointment of Angel Espada to the position of permanent police officer. Report from the Appointments Committee, Councillor Tyros. Thank you, Madam President. The committee met with the appointee, the mayor, and the police chief to discuss the appointment. The mayor reported that the appointee just graduated from the police academy and is currently in field training. Officer Espada grew up in Gardner and is bilingual in English and Spanish. The chief was excited about the resources Officer Espada will be bringing to the community, especially with his asset of speaking Spanish with the Gardner community. Officer Espada stated that, his, that uh, he views the Gardner community as home and a family and wants the best for Gardner. The committee voted in, uh, to recommend, therefore I move the appointment be certified. Second the motion. Motion made by Councilor Tyro, seconded by Councilor Walsh to confirm the mayor's appointment. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. The motion passes. At this time, we will take a brief recess of the meeting to swear in those who have been appointed here this evening. We will reconvene after the swearing in is completed and call the meeting back to order at that time. Thank you. 
Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear truth. That I will bear truth. Faith and allegiance. Faith and allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. In the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. In the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution. And will support the Constitution. And the laws thereof. And the laws thereof. Congratulations. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear truth. That I bear truth. Faith and allegiance. Faith and allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution. And will support the Constitution. And the laws thereof. And the laws thereof. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to call the meeting back to order. There are no communications from the mayor. Orders, item 10952, an order appropriating $23,091 from free cash to the IT software service license renewal account. Report from the finance committee. Council Ron Cormier. Yeah, the finance committee met with the mayor on this and is very much in favor of this. Treasury Department right now processes 900 weekly checks with the forms, whether they're deposited electronically or not. Um, this would allow them to bring on the software and the associated equipment with it to uh, provide the service of electronic um, remittance for the individuals involved. Um, or hopefully this will reduce it. It takes about a day and a half of process. Everything is it's done the old-fashioned way. It's all done by hand uh, individually. It should cut down quite a bit of the cost. It'll take a while for the system and everybody gets changed over. But we were in favor of this. The, uh, the cost, as is pointed out, is about 23000 It's a little more the first year for the equipment and the training that goes along with it, three days of required training. So the finance committee was in favor, and I move the order. Second. Motion made by Councilor Ron Cormier, seconded by Councilor Adorno Lowitz to uh, adopt the order. Is there a discussion on the motion? 
The clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Boone? Yes. Councilor Craig Cormier? Yes. Councilor Rana Cormier? Yes. Councilor Darren Lowitz? Yes. Councilor Harder? Yes. Councilor Heath? Yes. Councilor Tussone? Yes. Councilor Tyros? Yes. Councilor Walsh? Yes. And President Kaczynski? Yes. Ten yes. Ten yeas, the motion passes. Item 10953, an order appropriating $30,000 from water surplus to repairs to mains. Councilor General Watts. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the Finance Committee met on this earlier tonight to, and was favorable. This is to replace the uh, new water uh, gate box tops. Um, these um, structures are normally replaced when we do the road repaving, um, so it's minimal um, disruption. and. Tearing up the roads and replacing these things, get them fixed while we're fixing the road. Um, as I said, finance committee was favor in favor, and I move the order. Second. Sure. Motion made by Councilor General Laos, seconded by Councilor Tyros to adopt the order. Is there discussion on the motion? Councilor Walsh? Yes, the service committee brought that. Uh, this was presented at the service committee by the director of public works uh, as well, and although we did not take a vote on it because it was not referred to us, there was uh, a registration of support. So I, I will vote in favor. Thank you, Council. For the discussion, the clerk will please call the roll. Council Boone? Yes. Council Craig Cormier? Yes. Council Ronald Cormier? Yes. Council General Lowitz? Yes. Council Harder? Yes. Council Heath? Yes. Council Tisson? Yes. Council Tyros? Yes. Council Walsh? Yes. And President Kaczynski? Yes. Ten years. Ten years. The motion passes. Item 10954, an order appropriating $50,000 from sewer surplus to repairs to main new manhole frames and covers. Report from the uh, Finance Committee, Councilor Darrell Allen. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is similar to the last one. This is just for the manhole covers and frames, as you stated. Uh, Finance Committee was in favor, um, as Councilor Walsh pointed out for the previous one. Uh, Public Service Committee was in, in favor as well, um, or was um, had their vote of approval, even though they didn't need a vote. Um, I move the, um, and so I move the order. Second. Motion made by Councilor General Lowe, seconded by Councilor Ron Cormier to adopt the order. Is there a discussion on the motion? <coughs> the clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Boone? Yes. Councilor Craig Cormier? Yes. Councilor Ronald Cormier? Yes. Councilor General Lowitz? Yes. Councilor Harder? Yes. Councilor Heath? Yes. Councilor Tisso? Yes. Councilor Tyros? Yes. Councilor Walsh? Yes. And President Kaczynski? Yes. yes. Ten years. Ten years, motion passes. Item 10955, an order appropriating $150,000 from sewer surplus repairs to main relining. Report from the Finance Committee, Council General Alex. Thank you, Madam President. This um, one has to do with uh, relining the old sewer pipes. Um, last, I believe last fall, or at least last summer, they were, um, for lack of a term, scope. There's a camera that went through all the, um, uh, many of the pipes in Gardner, and uh, certain ones have been pointed out that a lot of, um, there's a lot of water seeping into them, so that water is then going to the water treatment plant, and we're treating that water when it, you know, we shouldn't be doing that. We're wasting chemicals. We're using those machines there um, to treat water that should just be staying in the ground. Um, the Finance Committee was in favor of getting this relining done, so they would be um, sealed the inside of them again, and they no more water would get in, at least in those spots. The list of streets, I believe, yes, is attached where uh, the relining is going to be performed, um, and I move the order. Second. Motion made by Councilor General Lott, seconded by Councilor Ron Cormier to adopt the order. Is there a discussion on the motion? The clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Boone? Yes. Councilor Craig Cormier? Yes. Councilor Ron Cormier? Yes. Councilor General Lowitz? Yes. Councilor Harder? Yes. Councilor Heath? Yes. Councilor Tisson? Yes. Councilor Tyros? Yes. Councilor Walsh? Yes. And President Kaczynski? Yes. Ten years. Ten years. The motion passes. There are no petitions, applications, communications, etc. cetera. Uh, reports and standing committees, finance committee, item 10946, a measure authorizing an intermunicipal agreement between City of Gardner and Town of Ashburnham for wastewater collection, treatment, and disposal. I'm gonna ask for a report from the finance committee, committee is also, and also a report from the service committee as it does fall into the service committee as well. Mm -hmm. Council General Alex. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as you stated, both uh, those committees did meet on this. Um, the reality is it's really, uh, kind of two, it is two agreements. One, um, we had questions about the first one being dated back. This is for the um, the injury school, obviously the sewer services uh, from the town of Ashburnham. Um, the reason it's dated back to 2022 in February is because that's when the previous agreement lapsed. So this is when it gets back dated to um, for those services back to there. Uh, the town of Ashburnham is up on their usage, usage payments. Um, there is a second um, second amendment on here for the 
um, back owed amounts for the capital expenditures. Uh, the one that's in June, uh, labeled June 2022, is due upon signature. And then there's the payment plan going forward for um, however many years that was outlined, eight or 10, I forget, I forget right now. I'm sorry, it's in the packet though. Um, the, uh, the new agreement, uh, Director Ronald did inform us that it did have more teeth. Uh, there are sometimes issues, particularly when school is out, because there's less flow from um, South Ashburnham up through Pearl Street, um, where there's some uh, smells. Um, they do have a system in place to address this um, in Ashburnham, but this gives us more um, strength in getting them to do what they need to do to um, abate those fumes. Uh, the finance committee was in favor. Um, and I do move the order. Second. Motion made by Councilor Lott, seconded by Councilor Ron Cormier to. Um, uh, authorize the measure. To Sorry. approve the authorization uh, report from the Public Service yeah, Committee. The Service Committee can also uh, had this uh, under consideration, and the director presented the situation similar to what Councilor Journal Alex has presented. Uh, there was a an issue that I think we wanted to address having to do with the uh, the uh, payments for capital expenditures or the uh, actual name share that uh, remained unpaid and there were issues, there appeared to be issues of that. This, uh, this new agreement plus the addendum that's attached to it seems, uh, seems to tighten that up uh, and provide a specific schedule. The, uh, Ashburn has already signed the agreement and they've approved it as to the availability of funds. So uh, it appears that uh, it's in order to counsel. The uh, committee voted uh, unanimously to recommend passage to, uh, uh, the, uh, to approve the authorization. Thank you, Councilor. Further discussion, Councilor Boone. Thank you, Madam President. Um, to the, uh, either the Finance Committee or Service Committee, should Ashburnham again refuse to pay or not pay on time can we shut it off that and do we do we need to take in their sewage is there councilor walsh yes this goes back a ways and uh, i remember being involved with the original agreement and uh, there are there are uh, measures enforcement measures the city can undertake uh, shutting it off is an option but it would have to be approved by dep because they are uh, uh, getting their approval would be challenging but sure. uh, we're confident that uh, the uh, benefit of having their participation exceeds the risk of uh, of uh, any potential default thank you councillor thank you councillor further discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Say no. the motion passes <coughs> we took up items 10949 and 10950 <coughs> at the beginning of the meeting Safety Committee, item 10861, an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Gardner, chapter 600, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, section 42, entitled One Way Street. Councilor Craig Cormier. Uh, yes, the police department has <coughs> started making their announcements that they are going to uh, enact this one way on a 60 day trial basis on April 10th. Uh, they've put it out on Facebook. They're gonna be doing code red uh, reach out as well to the residents of that area. Uh, therefore, until we get a little bit of feedback from this trial, I request more time. If there's no objection, the committee will be granted more time. The committee will be granted more time. Service committee, we just took up item 10946. Uh, item, 109, item 10909, a petition by National Grid and Verizon New England Incorporated Cross Street to install four jointly owned poles on Cross Street beginning at a point approximately 15 feet north of the center line of the intersection of Lawrence Street and Cross Street and continuing approximately 800 feet in a west direction, install four new poles on Cross Street. Councilor Walsh? Yes, I'm pleased to report that uh, Eric Fontaine, a representative of the contractor hired by National Grid to perform this project, uh, was present at the, uh, at the service committee meeting and answered questions uh, associated with uh, th this project and the removal of poles that were on private property associated with this project that aren't directly part of this petition. Uh, and uh, there's additional information that the uh, committee was looking to have as well as information to provide to the one of the abutters on whose land one of those poles exists in the middle of his backyard. Uh, and uh, so uh, with and we were assured by the gentleman, Mr. Fontaine, that he would be responsive 
for our request for additional information. So in the meantime, we ask for more time. Thank you, Councillor. If there is no objection, the committee will be granted more time. The committee will be granted more time. Well, Fair Committee, item 10891, an ordinance to amend the Code of the City of Gardner, Chapter 675 thereof, entitled Zoning, to change the classification of certain parcels of land along Route 140. Um, so the, this item, along with 10892 and 10893, um, actually cannot be um, voted on because of the process where the planning board needs to meet and have their, give us their final recommendation um, before we can vote on these items. Um, so we will uh, be taking more time on these items unless there is any objection. Given that there is no objection, we will be granting more time on items 10891, 10892, an ordinance to amend the code of the city of Gardner, chapter 675 thereof entitled zoning to add sports betting to the zoning table of uses, and item 10893, an ordinance to amend the code of the city of Gardner, chapter 675 thereof entitled zoning to amend section 1070 thereof entitled marijuana establishments to increase the quota allowed by the code of the city of Gardner. I'm going to be taking a couple of items out of order. Um, we're going to be skipping over the executive session item. Uh, there is no unfinished business and matters for reconsideration. We're going to move into new business. Councillor Heath. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to go ahead and say um, happy uh, Autism Month to everybody. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Tyros. Thank you, Madam President. No new council business this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dunlavitz. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Tassoni. Yes, I would just like to, um, thank you, Madam President. I would just like to reiterate what Councillor Cormier stated uh, with uh, the one way on Reagan being temporary um, starting on April 10th. I also like to note that uh, no parking signs were put up uh, um, um, where the streets intersect. And, and it appears as though the residents on that street are abiding by those no parking signs that were put up on the street. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cormier? I have no new business uh, this evening. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Boone? Uh, thank you. No new business. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Harder? Yes, um, I would just like to thank you. Um, wish everybody a, a happy Easter next Sunday and uh, that's it this week thank you thank you councillor councillor Walsh yes I was happy to see a spirited discussion and uh, debate associated with the zoning uh, act uh, amendments that are proposed and uh, and it's nice to see people engaged on an interesting and, and important topic here in the city thank you Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ron Cormier. I have nothing new this evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I have nothing new this evening. We will now take up the executive session, Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Subsection 22F, review and approval of the minutes of April 19th, 2022, executive session, not to be released. I will now entertain a motion that the City Council enter into executive session under the provisions of Section 21A7 of Chapter 30A of the General Laws, which allows a public body to enter into executive session to comply with or act under the authority of or, general, or any general or special law of federal grant in aid requirement for the purpose of reviewing the meeting minutes of April 19th, 2022, executive session of the City Council in which the City Council entered into executive session under Section 21.3 of Chapter 38 of the General Laws to discuss strategy with respect to collective, collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body, and the Chair so declares. And Section 21.6 of Chapter 38 of the General Laws to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real property if the Chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. Uh, the City Council will reconvene in open session at the conclusion of the executive session solely for the purpose of adjournment. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Councilor Walsh, seconded by Councilor Taros to enter into executive session. Is there any discussion on the motion? If none, the clerk will please call the roll. Councilor Boone? Yes. Councilor Tissot? Yes. Councilor Craig Cormier? Yes. Councilor Rana Cormier? Yes. Councilor John Lawitz? Yes. Councilor Harder? Yes. Councilor Heath? Yes. Councilor Tyros? Yes. Councilor Walsh? Yes. And President Kaczynski? Yes. Ten yeas. Ten yeas. The motion passes. 
The City Council will now meet in executive session. A brief recess will be called as the members of the public exit the Council Chamber. The doors will be shut and the public broadcast of the meeting will end. Following the City Council voting uh, to close the executive session, re-enter into open session, the doors will be reopened and the public admitted back into the Chamber solely for the purpose of adjournment. The meeting is now recessed. After the closing prayer. So moved. So moved. Second. Motion made by Councillor Craig Cormer, seconded by Councillor Tassoni. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Almighty Father, Father we see us over all. As, as we adjourn, adjourn we thank you for the opportunity to join our deliberation and action with us during the course of this meeting. Bless the Lord, Lord all, all gathered here, here, here and the and people whose representatives we are. And you shall attend to our common welfare until our next meeting. Amen. Meeting stands adjourned.